we light this candle as a reminder that Jesus Christ is the light of the world and walks with us each and every day, and we say, thanks be to God. Good morning. morning. Welcome. Welcome to this time and this place and this space of worship. Welcome to this time when we come together as a community and share our journeys with one another. Welcome to this time of excited chatter, of sharing our, our stories and our families and our traditions. This is our time. This is our place. This is our space of worship. We belong here together. And as we gather to, uh, together and worship on this sacred time, I acknowledge that we are on the unceded lands of Mi'kma'ki, the ancestral territory of the Mi'kmaq people, uh, protected by the Peace and Friendship Treaties. We honor their enduring relationship with this land and commit ourselves to learning its true history. May we be inspired to take meaningful action towards reconciliation and ensure the voices of the indigenous peoples are respected in our community. Our announcements have been handed out. Our announcements have been shared in all the different ways in which we communicate with one another. And so let's have a look. Uh, Today at six o'clock, we have a property committee meeting that will be downstairs. On Tuesday at 1230, the Merriam unit is meeting at the home of Maureen Roddick. Tuesday and Wednesday, we have quilters in the parlor, and Friday, we have youth group, Friday afternoon. On Saturday, we begin our church directory photos. Uh, Photo week has begun, uh, and there's a couple of times that have been added to, in case the, the original time slots weren't working for you, Nina has it all, and she's the one that's keeping it organized now. And so right now, we have times available, I believe, still on Saturday, November 9th in the morning. We have times available now on at the new times will be Sunday, December 10th in the afternoon. There are a few spots left. And then Saturday, November 16th, there are spots left on that day. Uh, there are no spots left on the 13th or the 15th. And so uh, I really encourage you um, to get your photo done for the photo directory. It's for us. It's for us so uh, we can see each other and journey together and pray for one another. It's for me. I love the photo directory. I love seeing all your faces. So please, please get your photos done. And I I heard from some folks they didn't want to get it because they would be the only one in the photo. There's lots of people. Um, And that's a great thing. I think it's wonderful because then I get to see just your face. So think of it that way. You're making me so happy. Um, And I'm so pleased with all of you who have signed up. And I can't wait uh, for photo days to start. So, pardon me. Um, There's all kinds of things happening in advance notices. If you look, uh, but the first one I'll call our attention to is, pardon me, Remembrance Day service. I'm going to take a drink. <clears throat> yes, our Remembrance Day service is next Sunday, November the 10th. And so uh, please join with us then. Uh, Emma's PJs are happening. Uh, the 10th annual Emma pajama dr- annual pajama drive, which I can't believe it's been 10 years, in memory of Emma Pearson, is now underway until December the 8th. We're collecting new pajamas for women and children to spread love around one pair of pajamas at a time with a message of comfort, hope, and love. And we thank you for helping us do that. And the community thanks you. Uh, They are so very well received. As you know, we send out big pajamas uh, to those that are staying at Roots for Youth. Hi, Ben. How you doing? Good. It's nice to see you. You helping Mary? Nice to see you. You're fine. He's fine. Um, I just wanted to say hi to him. (laughs) He's all good. Um, I'll just keep talking because that's what I do. Uh, Emma PJs. Yeah, so the big kids at Roots for Youth, they love the PJs. And I'm going to call Roots for Youth soon and get some sizes for us. And I'll I'll let people know what sizes we're looking for. And then we have our Food for Focus families who loved their PJs last year. And we want to continue to support them. 
And then we have our, the little baby pajamas. They go to the pediatric ward for little babies who come in and just need some fresh jammies to put on. And then we have the families, the moms, and uh, the parents, and the children that are at, uh, um, mm, it just went out of my brain. Chairman House, thank you, uh, and we're, who love receiving the pajamas every year. And so thank you to everyone, and we'll continue to support this. Speaking of Food for Focus, Sobeys gift cards are available in $50 or $100, and it's great. It, it adds one small step to your grocery shopping. So instead of just going to the grocery store and picking up some groceries and spending from your Interact card or your credit card, you just take that extra step and get the grocery card from Janice, and that little extra step adds all kinds of funds to our Food for Focus program so that we can continue to help uh, these food insecure families in our community which they really appreciate it. So take the one little extra step and, uh, and help uh, feed some local families. I already talked about the church directory photos. I, oh, these are new. I don't know if you saw these, but these are in the, in the pews. Uh, they're uh, our brochures. And in there is information to, if you need to find something or if you're uh, wondering a question, a lot of hopefully the questions are being answered by this pamphlet. Um, meant for maybe newer people worshiping with us, but maybe there's something you've always wondered and hopefully this will help you find the answer. It also has uh, links to our webpage and so you can, and also find us on Instagram and YouTube and TikTok and web, our website and all that information is here. So. Uh, Oh, and there is a little card in there, too, that if you want to contact me, this is a great way to do it. You can fill this out and put it on the offering plate or give it to an usher, or there's a box in the, in the front porch there. So, yeah, that's happening. If my sermon's really boring, it's also great reading material. So, win-win, right? Uh, trick, though, I wrote it, so you're kind of listening to me anyway. So win-win for me. Uh, I don't think I have anything else coming for the community at this time. Is there anything else that I've missed? Nope. Well, then, let's join together in our call to worship. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is created has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving God, as we gather in your presence, drawn by your call to love one another as you have loved us, open our hearts to your spirit today that we may see our neighbors with compassion and embrace them with your love. Amen. Our minute for mission today uh, comes from, am I at the right spot? I am, okay, cool. Uh, comes from the Ecumenical Campus Ministry, and a slideshow is going to play as I read to you um, our minute for mission. We would like to share a wonderful thank you letter that we received from the Ecumenical Campus Ministry, ECM, at the University of Guelph, a mission and service partner located in Guelph, Ontario. We're sharing it with you with deep gratitude for your generosity. Thanks to the support from the United Thanks for the support from the United Church Mission and Service. The Ecumenical Campus Ministry at the University of Guelph has been able to support the U of G community and accompany young adults during some of the most transformative years of their life. The Ecumenical Campus Ministry, ECM, has been a partnership of the Anglican, Presbyterian, and United Churches at U of G since 1968. 
The chaplaincy is fully supported by alumni, parents, and grants from the partner churches. The university does not fund faith programming. Over the 2023-2024 academic year, ECM was able to host 25 free meals to university students, provide weekly worship services right on campus, conduct field trips to 10 local churches, hold three public presentations on issues of faith and inclusivity, mentor five student leaders, host two different weekend retreats, and coordinate the queer Christian community for the 2S LGBTQIA plus students at U of G. This just scratches the surface. This kind of ministry presence is made possible because of ECM's vision of having a full-time chaplain, something that would be unthinkable without the support from the United Church Mission and Service. So, from all the students at the University of Guelph, thank you for the gifts of the University Church Mission and Service. Your support is making a difference in the lives of young adults at the University of Guelph. I'd like to say we also have a chaplain at Dalhousie. And many of these same uh, initiatives and programs are being hosted at Dalhousie and Halifax as well. Our offering has been gathered together. Our offering has brought together in all the different ways in which we continue to support and sustain the important ministries that we host here and hold here in prayer from St. Paul United Church. And for that, we are grateful. Let us now join together in the presentation of our offering. Generous God, we offer these gifts, trusting your promise to multiply them for the good of your kingdom. May they be used to spread love and justice to our neighbors near and far. Amen. Let us now offer our prayer for wholeness and renewal. Let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that we've not always loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have been quick to judge, slow to forgive, and hesitant to reach out in love. Forgive us for the ways in which we have turned away from your call to compassion. Renew us with your grace and help us to live out your love in all we do. Amen. Hear the good news. Hear it singing among us. This is the good news. God's love is greater than we can imagine. And God's grace is always reaching out to us. We are set free to love one another. This is our good news. We respond by saying, Our opening hymn is Jesus Loves Me. Boys United 365.
goodness. There we go. Hello. Hello, I do have friends. Thanks for noticing. Hi. How's everybody today? How was your week? I saw many of you out trick-or-treating. I did. It was so fun to have you at the house. That was so nice. And you all looked so scary, cool, awesome, fantastic. Um, I have a little story to tell you today. And there's two characters in the story. Can you guess who the characters are? <gasps> who are they? And a donkey and a duck. A donkey and a duck. All right. It's the story of the donkey and the duck. It's very famous. Um, there we go. It's the donkey oh, and the duck. Come on. <laughs> Once upon a time, on the farm, lived a donkey. Hee haw, hee haw, hee haw, and a duck. They lived both out in the, the pasture, like where all the animals were living. But do you know what? The donkey, hee-haw, hee-haw, he didn't like the duck. And the duck didn't like the donkey. The donkey would say to people, oh, the duck. The duck is always flapping around his wings. Flap, 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 flap. And that, that, that noise that he makes, the duck is always going, quack, 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 quack. Quack, 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 quack. I just can't stand it. Quack, 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 quack. Ugh. I don't, I don't know what he's saying, and I don't like the way he's just flopping around all the time. And the duck would say about the donkey, Ugh, that donkey, always with the hee-haw, hee-haw, hee-haw. Doesn't he know how to talk? He's just saying hee-haw. I don't understand what that means. And he can't even fly. Can you imagine? Stuck to the ground all the time. You'd think he would try a little. He doesn't even try at all. Yeah, yeah right? The ducky's right. <laughs> One day, the duck was out in the farmyard just walking along when all of a sudden, the duck got stuck in the mud. <gasps> oh no! And the duck was flapping his wings and trying to get out of the mud and going, ah, I'm stuck! So do you know what he started to do? Quack really loudly. And the donkey said, what is all that noise? Ugh, it's like the duck's quacking even more just to bother me. <coughs> so the donkey went over to find out what all this quacking was about. And he said, wait a minute, are you stuck in the mud? <coughs> I am stuck in the mud. I can't get out. Oh, oh. And the donkey said, oh, no. Do you know what? I was stuck in the mud not that long ago. And the farmer and the whole farmer family had to come out and unstuck me. That's terrible. I know what that feels like. Just a second. I'll help you. So then the donkey, using all his donkey powers, had to go hee-haw, hee-haw, and push the duck out of the mud. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, you're so kind. Thank you so much. I did not like being stuck in the mud, but you understood what it was like to be stuck in the mud. You've had that happen to you, too. I did, and I didn't like it. Oh, so we, we kind of have that in common. We both don't like being stuck in the mud. What else do we have in common? Um, you talked about the farmer's family. I really love the farmer's family. Oh, 
I love the farmer's family too. They're so good to me. Wait a minute, where'd that tiger come from? Okay, anyway, back to the story. <laughs> They're so good to me. They give me food. They helped me when I was stuck. Oh yeah, I love them too. They give me food and they help me all the time. That's why I'm so excited and I go whack, whack, whack. I get excited and I go hee haw, hee haw. Oh, that's what that's about. I didn't know. Maybe we can be friends. Let's be friends. Okay. Hi. <laughs> ah. Am I on film? <laughs> Thank you, that was fun. Do you know what was funner? It was me practicing all by myself in a quiet church this morning. I was really hoping nobody walked in to make coffee. Cause anyway, anywho, what did you think of that story? What happened? How did the donkey and the duck become friends? Okay. They did. But how did they find out they had things in common? <laughs> right? So they had something in common. Yeah, you're right. Good job. And when they listened to one another and they found out that they had things in common, they became friends. Jesus is telling a story today in the scripture story that we're going to hear in a little bit. And in it, Jesus says that we need to love one another, that we need to love our neighbors. And do you know how we be loving to our neighbors? We find out more about them. We listen to one another. And when we find out we've got something in common, we can be friends, right? Or at least find out what their point of view is. So let's listen to Jesus and listen to the donkey and the duck and listen to each other, right? Let's have a prayer before we go downstairs. How do we pray? You've got it. We put our hands together and it's a repeat after me prayer. Let's pray. Thank you, God for teaching us how to listen and how to get along with each other. Help us to listen every day and find a way to get along. Amen. Have fun. Just don't Let us pray. That's all. Oh God, your word for us is a path forward, a way to embody and listen to the lessons you have for us. Please let us listen for your word for us this day. Amen. So we're continuing in Mark, and we're just like another page ahead. Now we're on 1023, and we're in chapter 12. And we're talking about the greatest commandment, which you've probably heard this story before. What's happening is Jesus is talking to some people, and they're trying to find out if he can answer the questions. Sometimes they're trying to trick him into answering the question wrong. So this person is asking Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? And Jesus has this conversation with them. As we read through in our scripture, you're going to read with me the words that Jesus says. And so I'll start with Jesus said, and then read along with me as you can. The words are, up, are going to be up on the screen. 
uh, that Jesus said. Uh, so if the print in the Bible is not friendly for your viewing, you can always read up here along with everyone else. So the cue will be Jesus said. Let's read together uh, this interaction between Jesus and one of the scribes. One of the scribes came near and heard them. Oh, sorry, if you need to find it on the page, it's the first commandment. It's the top, of the title of it, and it's right at the top of page 1023. Sorry, should have gave better direction. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that he had answered them well, he asked him, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, Jesus said, the first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that. God is one, and beside God there is no other. And to love God with all your heart and with all, and with all the understanding and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself, this is much more important than, the whole, than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, Jesus said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any questions. This is our good news according to the Gospel of Mark. Thanks be to God. Our next hymn is Yesu, Yesu, Fill Us With Your Love, 593, and it's pronounced Yesu, so Yesu, Yesu. my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be truly acceptable in your sight, our Lord and Redeemer. Amen. So loving our neighbors, something we've heard and 
probably all of our lives uh, if we've come to the church. It seems very uh, normal, seems like something we hear all the time. It seems easy to do, it's something we should have no trouble with. It might be as straightforward as being kind to the people who live next door, but it's not. But what Jesus is saying goes so much deeper than just loving those who are close to us. Those that we see every day are those whom we share a lot in common with. Loving our neighbor, as you know, means extending love beyond the familiar, means loving people who might challenge us, people who might be different from us, people we might find difficult to love. And I'm sure we all have people like that in our lives. Jesus doesn't let us off the hook by limiting neighbor to the people we're comfortable with. He is consistently showing us through his parables and his teachings that the neighbors we're called to live, love, are often people we've been raised or conditioned or have a bias in our own lives to not love. In Jesus' ministry, he offered all this love and compassion to the people who society at that time had considered unworthy. Like outcasts, women, children, tax collectors, Roman soldiers, Samaritans, lepers. All these individuals, all these people were on the fringes of the society that Jesus lived in at the time. But Jesus went out of his way to embrace them. They were bold actions. They were counter-cultural actions. He didn't just talk about love. He actively crossed the social boundaries to demonstrate how to live that out. When he healed a leper, it wasn't only about addressing the physical needs of this person. It was about breaking the social stigma that isolated that person from the rest of society. By dining with tax collectors, he showed that no one, no one, was outside of God's love. His conversation with the Samaritan woman at the well revealed that love was beyond any ethnic or religious or social divides. He demonstrated that God's love is boundless. It extends to all. The kind of love that Jesus calls us to practice. That as Christians, as ones who follow Jesus, this is the love we're supposed to practice. Like I said, a love that goes beyond the biases that we have, because we all have a bias. It goes beyond any cultural ideas that we have, because it's beyond the way we were raised. It's a love that sees the image of God in each and every person, each and every person in humanity. I don't need to tell you that we live in a world that is increasingly divided. Uh, Just this past week, I watched a debate on YouTube. It was a debate between uh, two groups of people that were on two different sides of the political spectrum. And because, as you know, as Canadians, we, got a lot, we get a lot of American input in our lives, these uh, two groups were on the different sides of the political spectrum in the United States. And so they were supposed to be debating one another. They were supposed to be uh, having a conversation. But when I watched it, I realized nobody was listening. Everybody was talking. As the two people came to the middle of the room to speak to one another, they weren't listening at all. They were just speaking and trying to say as many of the words and as many of the points that they, that they could before the, other, the time was up. They just were spewing words constantly at each other, but neither side listened to the other side. Listening is a skill. Listening is something we just don't get. We can, we can hear, but to listen is something that's different, something that we have to cultivate. And if we practice listening, we can create empathy and understanding. As the saying goes, we have two ears and only one mouth. 
So we should be listening twice as often as we're speaking. I was uh, at a retreat last week uh, where listening was one of the activities that we were doing. We were, we were practicing um, active listening. It was focused on this idea of becoming a better listener. And the three main points of being a better listener were powerful. And they were to form these skills of active listening, empathy, and withholding judgment or advice. So active listening means putting aside our own thoughts and, and focus entirely on what the other person is saying. It's our human instinct to, as the other person speaking, be formulating our response. It's our human instinct when the other person is speaking to be thinking about our own story that we're going to tell next or how we would, uh, what we're going to say when they're finished telling us what they want to tell us. Active listening is shutting that off and actually listening to what the person is saying. And the empathy part of that is trying to understand their feelings and their experiences that they're sharing with you, kind of what's between the lines of the words that are coming out of their mouths. And to kind of, to, to, to try to empathize with their experiences, even if their experiences and their feelings that they're having about the story that they're telling are different from ours. And the big part for me um, was not the withholding the judgment part, but you're supposed to listen without judgment, but listen without advice. Listen without trying to solve the issue or the problem that they're telling you. To just, to just take it in without trying to make it better. I struggle with that. I had to work on that, to just listen without being ready to offer solutions. Practicing these skills helps us to connect with one another and allows us to truly hear one another rather than just waiting our turn to speak. And right now in our world, it feels like there's so many divisive things that are happening in our world. And it feels to me like everybody's talking and nobody's listening. And when no one listens, there's no opportunity for connection. There's no opportunity for understanding, and there's certainly no opportunity for healing. In case you don't know, coming up this week, there's an election in the United States. And if you don't know that, I'm very envious of you. Because everywhere I look, everything I listen to, every sound I hear is about this great big neighbor of ours that is having an election. And it's very clearly uh, visible to us on this side that that is a country that is divided. There are neighbors that are being marginalized and harmed. There, is, there are walls, both literal and metaphorical, being built and everybody is speaking, and I feel like nobody is listening. And these divisions are just deepening. They're becoming more ingrained. And this divisiveness, this creation of the enemy within is not new in our world. It's not new in human history. It's happened time and time again through various cultures throughout time, this dividing, this tool that is being used by those in power to create and maintain power. Those who use the tactics that are being employed aren't concerned about the families that they're tearing apart. They aren't concerned about the communities that they're destroying. They're focused on the power. Unfortunately, there is a real parallel with what's happening in the United States to what happened in South Africa with apartheid. The apartheid government in South Africa created division. They used fear and prejudice to keep people apart. 
If people were kept apart, they couldn't unite and challenge any corruption. If keep people were kept apart, they couldn't challenge any of the injustice that was be kept being done in the world. By keeping groups suspicious of one another, be keeping groups fearful of one another, by labeling the other, the leaders could be a, avoid being held accountable for anything that they were doing. I feel like the same type of division is being used today to create fear, to stoke anger and suspicion to anyone who is different. And that leaders exploit these divisions and encourage people to see each other as enemies rather than as neighbors. That whole type of leadership is completely the opposite of what Christianity teaches us. Jesus' teachings, Jesus' actions show us a path of service, of compassion, of listening, and of love. Jesus' ministry turns the world's power structures upside down. Instead of seeking power, Jesus washed his, the, the feet of his disciples. Instead of building walls, he crossed barriers and, and, and culture and class. Instead of silencing others, he listened deeply, inviting all voices to the table. Jesus showed true power, lives in humility. The true strength is in service, and that true greatness is found in love. And this kind of love and humility that Jesus calls us to embody, this is who we are called to be. We're called to be peacemakers. We're called to be bridge builders, to be called to be listeners. We're called to be people who create connection rather than division. By following Christ's example, we're invited to embrace all the different kinds of uh, people in the world, and we're called to embrace a different kind of power, that power that builds community rather than tearing it apart. Loving our neighbors is a challenge, especially when those neighbors are different or difficult or even opposed to us. Loving our neighbors is hard work, but I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Following Jesus is not for the faint of heart. Following Jesus is work. Following the way of Jesus will try us and make us grow and stretch. Jesus calls us to radical love because that kind of love has the power to transform the world. And when we listen, when we serve, and when we love, when we stand against the forces of division that are in the world, we become bearers of peace and love. And this world desperately needs that. So, when we leave this place, let's resolve to listen and to love. Let's resolve to see each other and the world around us as our neighbors, just as Jesus taught us to. And that is the good news. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving God, we come before you in prayer, knowing that your love extends to all people and that you hear the cries of your children. Help us to live out your commandment to love our neighbors as ourselves offering compassion and grace and kindness to all. And God, we pray today for our neighbors near and far, for those who are hungry, for those who are homeless, for those who are suffering from illness or injustice. Bring healing and hope to those in need and open our hearts to be agents of your love and peace. And God, we lift up to you today our neighbors to the south, as they prepare to hold their elections next week. O oh God, may peace prevail in a time of tension. And may wisdom guide both leaders and voters alike. O oh God, help them to listen to one another with respect, to seek unity amidst differences, to work towards justice 
compassion, and the common good. May your spirit, O God, bring hope and healing where there is division, and may your love shine through. God of peace, we lift up our world that is divided by conflict, by fear and hatred. We especially remember today places torn apart by war and violence. Bring peace where there is unrest, reconciliation where there is division, and justice where there is oppression. And God, we pray for our own community. We pray that we may grow in love and unity, that we may reach out to those who feel forgotten or unloved. Help us, O oh God, to see your face in each person we encounter and respond with your loving care. And finally, O oh God, we bring before you the concerns that weigh on our own hearts, those spoken and left unsaid. Surround us with your comfort and your peace, reminding us that you walk with us through all of life's joys and challenges. God of compassion and caring, we pray silently for those that we hold in our hearts this day. Source of all light, we praise you for the wisdom of your word and the hope of your promises. With all your saints on earth and in heaven, we commit ourselves to the dawning of your new age. And we pray together as we are taught, saying, Divine Creator, our Holy Parent, our Mother, and our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn is We Are Pilgrims, Voices United 595. <laughs> So let us go out into the world as people who have heard the good news 
who are listening to our neighbors, who are finding the common connections that will guide us forward as we follow Christ with the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit now and forevermore. Amen.